We are very pleased to be joined now by Amos Hochstein. He is a special envoy for energy security at the State Department. We're at the RBC Energy Power and Infrastructure Conference. Uh, Amos, it's great to chat with you again. Thank it's you. Great to be here, thank you. So we are in either the worst energy crisis since the 1970s or darn close to it. Not my opinion, U.S. government, IEA, you'll say that as well. A lot of blame going around. I get it, it's a blame country. How do we fix this? Well, Brian, I think that's the first part of fixing it, is to stop focusing on pointing fingers at everybody. We are in a in a uh, very tough situation when it comes to energy, when it comes to oil, gas, coal, wind, solar, batteries for EVs. We are seeing high prices for all of those things and real supply crunch uh, in every single part of the value chain of energy, whatever you want to call energy. But to solve it uh, or to address it, and to mitigate the concerns for the American consumer and for the global economy, we won't get there by saying, whose fault is this? It is no one's fault in the United States. This is at the end of the day, we're living in an, area where, in an era where we have a war in Ukraine that was started that derailed the markets. Uh, we have a coming, uh, we're coming out of COVID uh, faster, bigger, stronger than anybody anticipated. And I remind people and that- And driving it, a lot more. Exactly, driving more, flying more. Uh, and we are, uh, just eight months ago, we were in Omicron where we thought maybe we'll have another lockdown. So the investment into energy has, was declining throughout COVID, even probably before, and now we have to catch up with that time. So we are gonna mm. do everything we can to reduce the price for the consumer at home and to make sure that the global economy, because this is a global issue, not an American issue, is addressed. And we've already taken unprecedented steps. We have released a million barrels a day started release. Is it a million? Is it close, a million. close to a million? It's 180 million barrels that we are committed yeah. to but release. But it's hard to do more than a million a day, just infrastructure-wise. From an infrastructure perspective, to get it out of our U.S. reserves, it's very difficult to do. So we're at the max that we can do. We got our allies around the world to join in, so together we're releasing 240 million barrels a day. The price that we see today, just imagine what it would be if it was less 1.2, well, 1.3 million barrels. Uh, it's, okay, it's a counterfactual a bit, but I agree, I agree. And you talk to any serious analyst, and they'll say, we're at 120 bucks a barrel, but maybe we'd be at 150 bucks or whatever if we didn't have it. But it doesn't mitigate the fact that we're still at 120 bucks a barrel. You have been the key guy, speaking with Saudis, speaking probably with other members of OPEC, trying to get, you, you have the ear of the president. Is there an acknowledgement in the White House that domestic production of liquids, meaning oil and gas, needs to ramp. Absolutely, and we have worked with the industry. We've worked very closely with the oil and gas industry. Uh, the president said so publicly. We called on them to increase production. And in fact, the million a day release from reserves is to fill a gap. We know that the industry is going to increase CapEx this year, is already increasing CapEx. We've, we've seen them some on your network announcing that they're increasing CapEx, they're increasing production, but that production is not going to come online until towards the end of the year. So what we've done is we've put a million barrels a day on the market between now and the end of the year. At that point, as we retreat, the private sector will by then be putting on another million barrels a day. I think they can do more. I believe they can do more. They believe they can do more. But their constraints are not just the labor force and other things. They can manage those. But they have real fiscal concerns because Quite frankly, it's not Washington, it's New York that's creating the it's problem. Here? It's here in New York it's here? of bankers telling Maybe them, <laughs> not at this conference, no. but at, uh, in, uh, around here in this city, there are the ba banking community and financial community that is saying, look, if I have to choose between you increasing production even further or, and, and reducing dividends and share buybacks, I'd rather you did a combination of both. We would rather that they increase production especially in short cycle production yeah. that can come online relatively quickly uh, beyond the million barrels a day that we're going to come on this year. And we already know that about 800,000 is going to come on in 2023. We're doing our part. It's just that it's not enough and it's not only about oil. We also closed down a couple of refineries over the last few years. 50% of refining capacity in the Northeast of Mid-Atlantic is gone in the last 15 years. 50%. Correct. And we we're not, trucking jet fuel in from Ohio to Newark Airport to hope that your, your flight will take off. And in the last two years over COVID, we shut down additional refining capacity in the United States and even more than that in Europe. 
So we, that, those are refineries that are not coming back. We have to acknowledge that. So we have to manage an ecosystem where we, have, we need more oil production, more gas production, but we also need more infrastructure and more abilities to yeah. make sure that our inventories on the East Coast are filled in time for crisis times like hurricane seasons, uh, the winter, et cetera. Yeah. We have to make sure that we have those supplies there and we're going to do that. But we are not, if you look at the projection for demand, of energy consumption around the world and in the United States as we electrify more and more, we are going to need to also uh, do something about demand. And that's where the energy transition is not about which side are you on. It's not, are you, a, are you an environmental guy? Everything or are you a has a side guy? now, come on, you know that. That's the problem. Electric gas, red, blue, east so, coast, west coast. The problem is that's mostly in how we talk about it. But when we start thinking about the energy system itself, yeah. they don't care about opinions. Look at where the money's going. So we're going to have, we have to accelerate the growth in renewable energy. We have to accelerate the growth in uh, electric vehicles. But we also have to acknowledge that it's going to take time for that to come online. And we don't want but to reduce the Can you acknowledge that wasn't, that wasn't done well at the beginning? You, everyone says about you, you're super rational. You're a rational actor. You, you've got the ear of the White House, but at the same time you acknowledge that in five years, not everybody who makes $40,000 a year is going to be driving a Tesla. That's that, not going to happen. For poor people, a car is maybe the most valuable asset they own. They're driving them 12.2 years on average now. That we, we're going to need, we're not going to be all electric in five years. It's not going to happen. Absolutely not. And we know that the car companies are already announcing that they're going to switch to all electric, not before 2030, 2035 and beyond. So we have a time frame between now and then of an energy transition that has to be managed. Mm. That means in the short and medium term, we have to make sure that there's enough oil and gas and refined products that are available to the market to make sure that the global economy functions. At the same time, we have to make sure that we're ready yeah. for the next level of the, of the market, of the energy system. What I don't want to do is wake up one day and not prepare for the day of, of electric vehicles. And I don't want, I don't want to replace you know, OPEC and a few producers of oil with one producer of batteries and where I'm relying on them. The, the fact that we're transitioning to a greener economy doesn't mean that the supply chains and the geopolitics of energy are not going to affect the American consumer. So I, we need to do many things at one time. We have to make sure we have enough supplies right yeah. now to bring down these prices. It's and we have to make sure we're ready. It's a rational conversation. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's because it is a crisis. And so you need rational actors like yourself. You mentioned geopolitics. You've been over in the Saudi, Saudi Arabia speaking with them. There's talk about President Biden meeting with the Saudis. Can you confirm a meeting and or a date for us? Is that meeting going to happen? And if so, when? Well, as the president said the other day, we haven't confirmed any travel yet. Uh, the president is already said that he is likely to go to Israel uh, sometime in the near future uh, and may go to another uh, Arab country. Uh, Saudi Arabia is certainly on the list of possible countries that he would go to. Uh, these things takes time to put together. As you said, I have been traveling, but the conversation with Saudi Arabia is not just about energy or, or oil. Uh, it's a strategic relationship that we have. It's a very important strategic partner to the United States, has been for 80 years, will continue to be. And when you look at some of the challenges that we face from Iran to Iraq, stability in the Middle East, and investment in the technologies of the future. These are areas that we are, we'd are. we like to see cooperation with Saudi Arabia, with UAE, Qatar, uh, Kuwait, other members of the GCC, of the Gulf countries. Mm -hmm. So this is about, yes, oil is part of it, uh, but that's not a reason to, uh, to frame our relationship uh, around. It's, it's a broader set of issues that we have to do, and that's why these things uh, sometimes take more time. It's a very important relationship. Well, if, if and when it's confirmed, let us know. Amos Hochstein, thank you very much for sitting down with CNBC. Critical time, critical topic. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here.